Well, if your car has these three little letters, AWD, on the back of it, find out today why it's so important to have the correct tire size. Hey, welcome to the Oz Stars Cars channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about tire size as far as the circumference, the diameter, or the height of the tire. It's very important, especially if you have an all-wheel drive vehicle and you have to replace a tire that you get the correct size because you can cause drivetrain problems. So let me take you down here to this one that blew out and I'll show you what's going on. So here's our problem, child. Right here, it didn't take me long to find this hole or this leak or what was causing it. Uh, if you look right in there, you can see that is completely destroyed. I never saw anything on the road. It may not look big on camera, but I'd say this is at least an inch and a half and it goes way in there and the treads actually like pushed up because it's it's so bad so anyway um, that's our problem and this tire I'm considering to be junk so I do have some tire experiences and I know you know what's good and what's not as far as repairing that's not something I would even consider repairing or patching so anyway I got a replacement and that's what we're going to talk about today how important the height is from here or the circumference from here to there and I'll give you a demo on that in just a second, but what you need to do is measure this tread depth. So these tires actually happen to have about uh, 30,000 miles on it or so. Hold on, I need to get my, let me get my little uh, light holder I made here. I did a video on this and uh, it's actually working out pretty good as far as my, my creativity, there we go. So you need to get one of these which is a tire depth, tread depth gauge. This one happens to have millimeters and 30 seconds. And what you do is, you basically, if you're not familiar, you take this, let me show you, let me get some good lighting here. And all you do is place this down and then read, oops, it's hard to do it one-handed here with the camera. There we go. And then what you do is on the side, you read what tread depth you have. Now this is about, just under seven, it looks like. So what I did was went online and happened to find this brand. I searched this tire. This is a Continental, by the way, and did a search on eBay. And I found the same brand. Now the problem or the reason why I didn't just go buy a new one, never mind these are $200 a piece. And if you have, them, have to have them mounted and balanced, you're looking at even more money. Um, and that wasn't, you know, that's not the real issue here. The real issue here is that the tread height or depth affects the circumference. So the revolutions here. So if you have a taller tire, then obviously a worn out or short tire, the larger tire is going to take less revolutions to go the same distance. I actually put a piece of tape down here on the floor. I'm gonna give you guys a demo about that in just a second. Let me just show you, if you're not familiar, how to find the date. When you buy a used tire, you don't wanna get a tire that's very old, you know, it can dry rot. It may look good on the tread, but it could blow out on you. You don't need that headache. Anyway, you go down here to what's called the DOT. Now this is upside down. Right here is DOT, and then you take these last four, and it says 4617. So that is the 46th week of 2017. I happened to come over to my replacement. Where's the, here's the DOT right here. This one, and hopefully that light's not too bright, is actually the 42nd week of 2017. So the good news is these were only made a couple of weeks apart by chance, and their tread depth happens to be the same height. If you can't find a tire that's the same circumference as your originals that are on the car, let's say they like these have about 30,000 miles on it. Um, I suggest that you're going to replace all four and people go well, that's crazy, right? What do I need to replace four tires for? Well, let me explain. Okay, so what's actually being damaged? Well, it's in the drivetrain. You could get damage to a differential which has gears in it uh, There's couplers like in this particular car. There's a rear diff coupler um, And that has clutch packs in it and these clutch packs sometimes have silicone fluid, which is like a viscosity kind of thing. And the more pressure or the more torque that needs to be applied to the wheel that has traction, these, these discs compress and they, uh, they cause friction. And the excess friction will wear those out. You could get damage to the transfer case. 
um, the transmission, anything in the drivetrain basically. And what's actually happening is, and you may not be aware of it because you might not get a light on the dash telling you there's an ABS issue or something like that or a traction control problem. Well, what the computer's seeing is a wheel that's spinning faster. So it thinks that there's a spinning wheel or a wheel that's losing traction. So it's gonna send power to the tire that it thinks has traction and gripping. Well, in this case, it's just, it would not in this case, but if you had an undersized tire, that would be the case. And um, it's causing that additional wear to go on. So, you know, if you go into a dealership, let's say you've got a new Subaru or a newer one and it's under warranty, you know, it's been two and a half years or whatever, and you've got 30, 40,000 miles on those original tires and you happen to go get a, you know, replacement tire that wasn't the exact circumference, here's where the problem is. It could be one tire, two tires, three tires. Now I'm picking on Subaru only because their tolerances are so tight with their symmetrical all-wheel drive and I think they only want a quarter inch difference between all four tires. So basically all those tires, the height difference can't be more than a quarter inch. And you go in, let's say you've got a clunking going on under there and I don't know, let's just say the the rear diff coupler is about to blow up and uh, you go in and you're thinking, oh, I got the warranty and they decline you. They decline the warranty. Well, or they void it. And that's basically, you know, they would see an undersized tire like that and could throw that problem as the cause for the issue and the excessive wear going on, you know, use and abuse kind of thing. So anyway, you know, that's any vehicle though. So you got to keep that in mind. When you replace these tires, they need to be the right circumference and they're, they're easy enough to check if you can't get the same brand. So if you've got three Michelins and one Continental or whatever it is, you gotta make sure that the height is the same or very close within tolerance. Now I was reading that the uh, Audi Quattro's can go up to a half inch difference between the four tires. So that's a big, you know, big amount of tread. All right, I wanna demonstrate for you the, uh, the distance thing. So I'm just gonna take a piece of blue painter's tape and put that on each tire here. Now we've got our replacement here and this one is just a motorcycle tire. I just picked it because it was shorter than the, uh, the replacement. And the purpose of this demonstration is to show that um, the taller tire is going to roll for, not as far as the shorter one to get the same distance. So the revolutions, we're gonna do one revolution back here. Hopefully you can see it. I already put a piece of blue tape and we're gonna mark it on this end where you guys are. I'm hoping you'll be able to see it, see me back here. So we'll take the blue line, match it up here to this blue line right there. Okay, we'll go one revolution. And when this gets to the bottom, we'll stop. Right there, let me grab another piece of tape and just mark that. So that's right here, okay, and I got a Sharpie on me. Let's mark that uh, T for tall. All right, let's get this out of the way. And now let's do the same thing with the motorcycle tire. I'm gonna put it right on the line, roll it one revolution, and we'll see where it stops. Right here, let me get the tape, get a piece of tape. You guys see that? Yeah, right down here. So there's that one. And we'll put this one, we'll label it small. S for small. So, let me take you off the tripod and let's take a look at this up close. So we can see, you know, how much shorter that, of course, that's a big difference. Now, we just did this little, what, I don't know, eight feet, whatever it is, close to it, demo, but here's the thing. If you have, let's say, a tire that's 11 30 seconds, like brand spanking new, and you've got an 8 30 seconds tread. Well, what I read was, if you go a mile, that the um, taller tire will actually be 11 feet further than the shorty. So over time, imagine, you know, 
hundreds, thousands of miles, that's a big difference. So there's two different ways to measure the circumference. You could use one of these. This is like a fabric ruler. You've seen these around. Uh, they use them to measure clothing and stuff. Anyway, if you don't have one of these or the one like I have in this case isn't long enough, can't use it. The other way is just use some string or rope. Now I'm going to use this mule rope. If you've ever done any or know any commercial electrical, uh, mule rope is amazing. This stuff is really strong. Now the important thing is if you use rope that when you pull on it, it doesn't stretch because obviously you don't want to take a measurement and stretch it out and it's longer than it really is. So let me take you down here, show you what I do. And it's really simple. I'll just take a uh, you know piece of tape. Let me grab my tape here. One second, there we go. And we'll just tape our string. Now I wanna be, this tire happens to have a big deep groove down the center. So I'm just gonna go a little bit to the side of the center there. Let me grab a piece of tape. And what we do is, I'm gonna make, make this a little bit long. Just tape that down right there. And what we'll do is take our Sharpie and I'm gonna mark a mark right here. I'm just gonna put a black mark right across. Doubt you guys can see it, but it's right there. And all we have to do now is rotate the tire around. Let me uh, start moving this. I don't know if this will get out of the shot or not. Keeping this flat. You can steal your kid's kite string or whatever, whatever works. I didn't use kite string for the demo here because uh, you guys probably wouldn't be able to see it very well because it's so thin, but that would work. And we're almost there. Bring it around. And you know, I've got good tension on it. I'm not getting crazy, I'm not pulling it super hard, but I've got tension on it. And now all we need to do is, Where's my marker right here? We're going to mark our other line right across here. Okay, so let me give you a little zoomy zoom right there. So hopefully you can see that. And now we just remove this. We'll lay it on the ground and we'll figure out how long this sucker is. So just to unroll this, that's it. Put the tire aside, and what I do, let's go wide. I'm going to take this end of the tape, or the, the tape, the string, or rope. Tape it to the floor, and our mark is right here. Then I'll come down to this end and I'm stretched across over to here and my mark is right on the edge of that blue tape so I know where that is and let's just stretch make sure this is stretched properly and put this over here all I do now is pull on the rope you know snugly and I can see that I'm about 90 and 5 eighths is right here so that's it so that's how we can tell the difference so basically, we would do that, you know, in case we had to check the tire size. Now I'm confident that this is gonna be fine because I got the same brand, model, all that good stuff, measured the tread depth. But if you had a different brand of tire, you could jack the car up, um, even if you just wanna get an idea of what it is, jack the car up, the, air, the tires are aired up, you can do the same trick right around there. The tape measure thing, or I guess the cloth measure, this deal, would be a lot simpler. Uh, in fact, I'm probably gonna order one that's longer just to save some time. But anyway, if you don't have it and you need to get through, that should do it for you. All right, so another important thing is to rotate your tires. So your front tires do all the turning. They tend to wear out a little more, most of the time under normal wear than the rears, unless you're doing a lot of burnouts. And uh, that depends what kind of vehicle you're driving. Most all wheel drive vehicles, you're not doing burnouts and donuts. But by rotating your tires every 7,500 miles, they'll wear even more evenly. So that's a good thing to consider. And you know, that way you don't have to get to a point where you're like, darn, do I just replace two? Well, with the all wheel drive, you don't want to just replace two. Like I mentioned, uh, it's important to keep them even. So anyhow, I think I'll take this off now and 
we'll get to the next step. Um, I hope that gives you an idea of what's actually what actually can happen. That's the potential. Now, if you've got to put a smaller tire or wheel on and just drive, you know, short distance somewhere, it's not going to kill your drivetrain. I mean, let's face it. If you have worn tires and you put on your little donut, they call it. I, sh I, sh I don't know. I think I showed it earlier in the video. You know, your spare tire. That's the donut. A little skinny doohickey. Well that's probably going to be taller than your worn out tires. So it'll get you down the road. You don't have to worry about it if you got to put 50 or 100 miles on. It's, you know, it's not like panic mode. But if you're doing, doing everyday driving and lots of miles and lots of miles, they add up. That's where the wear can happen. And you behave yourself, Chaos. All right, I got the uh, replacement tire mounted and balanced. So all that's working well. That's good. But what I want to show you over here on the uh, original tire that we saw you, know, you saw earlier now that the wheels off I noticed something very interesting here and I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick this up but it's over two inches long here this is where the damage was this is pushed outwards you know that way hopefully you can see the the dimple so to speak it's pushed that way which makes me wonder exactly uh, <laughs> you know what's going on here because if you look at the tread which makes sense it's definitely I don't know, I got the paint, you know, paint marker where I marked it, but this is all bulging upwards. This whole area here where the split is, is up. And I can actually, you can't see it probably, but there, it looks rusty. Those metal belts look, they look brown. They look dirty. Let me put some light on it. Oh, they're dirty, all right. Anyway, um, just trying to figure this out. If anybody out there knows a uh, tire CSI guy or something, let me know because... I think Continental should be made aware of this issue. Something else that I noticed or to be aware of, so over here where it's not cut, this, this tread is actually pushed up, but let's see if I can show you. Now remember this tires, I don't even know if it's two years old. I don't, I checked the date, I know it's about to, but along here in this area, you know, this whole area, the tread along here is my little pointer. I'm noticing Where's my pen at, or my screwdriver? Right here, my pointer. Minor cracking. So hopefully, that's coming, oop, it just got out of focus. Hopefully that's coming up on camera that all the way around this tire, there's minor dry rot going on. And, uh, you know, that's kind of premature for a tire that's about two years old. And that's the way I feel about it anyhow. Let me know what you guys think. All right, let's wrap this John up. So anyhow, a good tool to have is this cheap, inexpensive tread depth checker here. Um, now, I want you to keep in mind, just because you get a replacement tire and it has the right tread, the same tread depth, let's say you're replacing one as the other three, keep in mind it's not always going to be the same circumference. Now, if you get a different brand, let's say we have three Michelins that all match and we get a replacement Goodyear. Well, Goodyear's 235-55R19 may be a completely different circumference overall than the, um, you know, the other three Michelin. So what I want you to do is definitely check the circumference of it. So their one brand size may not be the same as the other brand size, even though they say the same number. I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> I don't want to ramble on about it, but I'm trying to get a point across. Anyway, keep that in mind. Make sure you do the circumference check with the rope or get one of those paper uh, tape measures, cloth tape measures, whatever you call them. Um, what else can I tell you? That's about it, really. That's, you know, a lot cheaper. Well, let's put it this way. Tires aren't cheap these days, but it's cheaper than replacing driveline components. So even if you can do it yourself, all right? So do yourself a favor, save the headache. You know, you may have a different size tire on there and think everything's good to go, and it probably will be for a little bit, you know, as long as it's not obviously too short. But here's the difference, here's the thing. You won't see the ABS light come on, you may not see the traction control light come on, but keep in mind the computer is making those adjustments in there, and it sees that wheel, what it thinks is slipping, and it's causing that excess wear. So that's all I got to say on that. I hope you enjoyed the video or thought it was good or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you smash the like button. 
So do go ahead and smash the like button down there if you get a chance. I appreciate that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. And uh, that's about it for today. So thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you guys following along here on the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.